So I think we can begin. Shall we? Yes. Okay, with your permission. Uh, very good morning, all of you. Uh, Dr. Viyu Amira, Principal, MES Pandani College, uh, Resource Person of the Day. Dr. M. Jayanti Nath, Assistant Professor, Department of Material Science, Madurai um, Kamaraj University, faculties and students. Uh, welcome all of you to the IAC's Impact Lecture Series. Uh, let me introduce the Impact Lecture Series scheme to you. Uh, see, Impact Lecture Series <coughs> uh, is a scheme of the Institution Innovation Council to motivate the students and faculties of higher education sector in India through lectures by experts in various fields. Under the scheme, uh, institution innovation, uh, inst IAC institutions uh, have to organize two sessions, uh, which means four expert lectures with the support of the Ministry of Education, Government of India, and AACT. <clears throat> various fields such as uh, in various fields such as uh, innovation, IPR, and startup. This shall be conducted by inviting successful resource persons in these fields. Today, we are having the first lecture of the Impact Lecture Series on the focus of the theme, Research and Development, as Session 1 and Lecture 1. See, uh, I have the privilege to welcome Dr. M. Jayanti Nath, the resource person of the day, who is delivering, delivering the lecture in the R&D session. Uh, who is the Assistant Professor in Material Science, Department of Chemistry, Madurai Kamraj University and who is going to deliver the lecture today. I uh, warmly welcome to the uh, Impact Lecture Series, sir. Thank you uh, so much. Yeah, OK. Then uh, uh, the session will be presided by our principal, Dr. V. U. Amira. I also welcome you, madam, to the session. Thank you. Uh, before that, uh, I, 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 uh, and also I uh, also welcome the faculties of uh, uh, the MES Panani College and other colleges to the session, and uh, the students, uh, students of uh, MES Panani College, other college and other colleges to the session. I welcome all of you to the session. And uh, before that, before uh, going to the presidential address, let me use the privilege to introduce the guest to you, uh, Dr. M. Jayanti Nath, uh, who is an experienced scientist in the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology and published more than 100 papers in the field of nanoscience or nanomaterials for energy applications. He is the recipient of uh, several awards, including the Young Scientist Award of DSP, Government of India, Raman Postdoctoral Fellowship uh, from UGC, Government of India, and Indo-German uh, uh, Fellowship uh, from Department of Science and Technology, Indo-France Project, and he has gained eight PhDs and several MPhils. Besides, he has yeah, I use this privilege because he's, uh, see, I know him from past 12 years as a scientist and a friend, and he is collaborating with us since then. I am happy to mention that our mutual research group has published one article recently. On behalf of the IAC cell of MES Ponani College uh, and myself, I privileged you to once again to the lecture, uh, lecture series and uh, welcome you once again, sir. Uh, so I uh, invite uh, Dr. Vio Amira to present the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes. You're audible. Uh, Dr. Jairam, IAC President, uh, our respected Chief Guest, Mr. M. Jayanti Nath, uh, Sabina, our faculty members, students, and scholars, a very good morning to all. Uh, actually, I am beaming with pride and happiness to become a part of this scholarly program. Uh, the Institution Innovation Council of our college, as all of you know, uh, plays a vital role in nurturing the culture of innovation in our college, uh, sidetracking from the conventional ways of teaching and learning, and diverting from the traditional subjects. Innovation cells often give the students the opportunity to develop their innovative skills, uh, to work with new ideas and transform them into prototypes while they are in their for transformative years. Activities of IICS uh, could ensure creative and at the same time rapid development of the country by bettering the performance of higher education institutions all over India. IIC cell of our college too, under the guidance of our vibrant faculty, Dr. Jairam, 
actually partake in the various activities proposed by Ministry of Education, Government of India. We are really proud to be a part of this government initiative and to instill research and innovative aptitude among students to help them become self-reliant and to contribute to nation building. The IAC cell of our college also closely follows the AICT and MOE's IAC schedule and is very much keen to conduct the important programs as per the schedule. And now we are going to have the first talk in the Impact Lecture series organized by IIC of our college. And I'm so happy that we have a very resourceful and ingenious guest, Dr. M. Jain Dinath, Assistant Professor of Material Science from Madurai Cambridge University. As Dr. Jairam mentioned, he's a very good scholar and whose, whose achievements are well recognized in the academic circle. He's one of the prominent scientists in the nano science and nanotechnology and recipient of several awards and fellowships include Research Fellowship Award from National University of Singapore and Norwegian Research Council. He's also the recipient of Raman Fellowship. By getting him as a resource person, I'm sure that we are going to have an enlightening session. So without much elaboration and with due respect, I also welcome Dr. Jayaninath on behalf of MES Panani College. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. It was a nice introduction and uh, you have explained about this, uh, your college and as well as the importance of this uh, program. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, let me thank uh, Jairam for the uh, invitation. And uh, uh, can I share my slides? Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. Can you, can you see my slides? Yeah. Uh, as before going into my talk, actually, I thank uh, again once again uh, Dr. Jairam and the organizing team, and especially the uh, director, uh, Viu Amira, for giving me a very nice introduction and uh, uh, giving this opportunity to share some of our uh, research experience and activities that are going in Madre Kamaraj University. As you see that today I, what I am planning is I don't want to go into very detail about the research uh, uh, subject and I restrict myself into the synthesis and characterization of nanomaterials because nanomaterial has been uh, has been widely talked uh, in, uh, for the last three decades and people have been uh, trying to uh, still work and explore more of this opportunity from the nanomaterial structures. And before moving on to the talk, I here just want to also mention about uh, uh, the slide in the here. I have mentioned the peacocks. Uh, our campus is really um, full of peacocks that surround us. And um, we belong, I belong from the Madurai. And I hail from Madurai. And Madurai city is really very well known among Indian peoples. And especially you people from Kerala also know about it. And we have a very big culture of this uh, temple city, and it is called this, and especially Madurai Meenakshi Temple is uh, even nominated for the uh, World Wonders. And in this city, uh, West, our university, Madurai Kamaraj University, lo uh, located uh, almost in, on the 8 to 10 kilometers in the West. And uh, we, our university is very renowned university for many of the science uh, disciplines and we have a really good name in all over the country. And uh, people for those who have studied in our university has really uh, has a good positions in uh, all over the world. So with this introduction about Madre Kamraj University, and I would like to move on to my talk. So my talk will be like, uh, you can say that I can uh, divide my talk into four different sections. The first part of the talk will be focusing on the introduction of nanomaterials and nanoscience. What is nanoscience? What is nanomaterials? And why it has so important that people are really keen to study these materials. So that would be my first uh, part. And the next part will be like synthesizing how one could synthesize on what are the different types of approaches that people have adapted to synthesize and characterize these materials in a systematic manner. 
So that would be the second part. And the, with that nanomaterials, how one could use these nanomaterials for energy devices, such as solar cells and photoelectrochemical cells. And then you can also say that uh, energy storage devices. But I think the, uh, due to the limitation of time, I will be mostly focusing on the solar cell device and photoelectrochemical device. And we can discuss and stop me if you, or if you need any clarifications while I am talking. So let's move on to the introduction to the nanoscience concepts and applications. So what is a nanoscience? A nanoscience is the science of extremely tiny particles the nano word originates from a Greek word meaning that it's a dwarf. So that means very small. And definition of a nanoparticle will be like one to 100 nanometers, where it can be also in one billionth of a meter or 10 to the power minus six millimeter or millionth of a meter. So this is what the nano coin the, as a scale is. If you look at these nanomaterials, where it lies in, in the science field is nanomaterials really fill the gap between the atomic chemistry and the solid state physics, where it has really matching the nanoscale regime. As you see in the table here, you have a chemistry which is dealing, atomic chemistry that is dealing in, in an atomic scales like electrons, neutrons, and protons, whereas in solid state physics that you are dealing with the clusters of thousands or 10,000 atoms with the uh, bulk material, in between these two regimes, there is a uh, nanoscale uh, regime which has an atom of 10 number to 100 to 1000 atoms. So that can be in the range of uh, several uh, nanometers. So if you look at it in the length scale of here, so you see a football is almost around 22 centimeters, whereas a small nanocarbon, which is in like 0.7 nanometers. So that which is, has a 60 carbon atoms, so this is carbon 60, which has a similar structure like a football, but it's the same in the range of 0.7 nanometers. So here I have also illustrated the different scales with for different uh, uh, materials, like uh, for example, this is a fly, that's pet fly, which is in the order of 10 to the power three uh, meters. And, uh, and here that is in the one millimeters. And here you have a human hair, which is in the range of 80 micrometer, whereas you have a red blood cells, which is in the seven micrometer scales. And uh, you, this is a very famous figure that is from the last uh, decades. It, uh, the IBM has managed to manipulate the atoms and they have written it in the range of about five nanometer from top to bottom. So this is a very nice STM scanning tunneling uh, microscopy image that we one had can see visualize this. And here is an, another one which is stating like one nanometer, this is a bundle of single walled carbon nanotubes. With this introduction, uh, I will also tell that this is really not a new thing. It has been really uh, in the fourth century and in the 17th century, the people have been using unknowingly that these materials are inbuilt in, for example, in fourth century, the Lycrops cups they, you can see there are two different cups with the giving a different types of colors when the temperature or light shines onto them. What it is, is the inbuilt people recently found that, that there is an inbuilt of plasmonic nanoparticles such as a gold and silver. So similarly, the South Rose window also has a very nice colorful pictures, which is the nanomaterials are incorporated into it. And here in 1857, you can see that the gold nanoparticles were chemically synthesized and it's a Faraday's gold colloidal particles. And this sword, Damascus sword, in this, if you look at it carefully with the technology development, people identified that there is a carbon nanotubes were uh, ported into the wall uh, of the uh, raw uh, sword. And also recently, I think you know about the key lady in, in, in Madurai, they have been, the archaeologists have found that the pottery is were also may, uh, incorporated with the uh, carbon nanotubes. So the, it is really not a new thing, it's already there. And to, after when we have developed the technology, we were managed to study this uh, wonderful world of nanoscience. So in, 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 in addition to that, which is also present in the nature that is inspired, such as 
you can see in the butterflies you have the different uh, nanomaterials that are incorporated and then the nanofibers in the hairs of uh, big foods and you can also uh, imagine that the why the water and uh, the lotus leaf does not stick there is a very nice nano coating onto the surface of the lotus uh, leaves and uh, with that uh, i would also need to mention about the father of uh, the nano scientist richard feynman who all has a really uh, very nice coating there is a plenty of room at the bottom so what he was afraid is to consider the question that ultimately it will be a very great future when we were able to arrange an atoms uh, each of the atoms and we can uh, try to get a uh, device from that so that is what uh, his visualizations and this was uh, presented in the annual meeting of american physical society in 1950 and with this vision, yes, he, he now I think I just in the previous slides I mentioned that uh, IBM has really did that they can manipulate the atoms and they have shown that these atoms can be really manipulated and then they have arranged to uh, whatever basis. Is. And uh, he can also he also said the atoms on a small scales really behave nothing like a large scale. For that satisfies which is uh, loss of quantum mechanics. So we can manu manufacture in different ways and this can be used for uh, many other applications which can, uh, so the systems which can involve the quantized energy levels or interactions of quantized spins, etc. So this can be used in all applications that we are currently using in any of the electronics and uh, other uh, devices. Further, uh, with this introduction, uh, one should also need to know whether the nanomaterials uh, has any kind of uh, dimensionality. Yes, the nanomaterial has a really a three main classification based upon their dimensionality. So the nanomaterials can be classified into 0D, 1D and 2D. This classification is based upon their uh, electron confinement uh, over the dimensionality. That is, if are zero dimensional, the electrons or confined in all three dimensions, which is also called as quantum dots. Example, it, here it's fluorine. And when the electrons are confined in two dimensionals, that is, we'll call as quantum wire. And the electrons is confined in one dimension, then it is called quantum wave. So in nanoscience is a part of a study that one could study the phenomena and manipulation of materials at atomic, molecular, and micromolecular scales where properties differ significantly from the large scale. So this is the definition for uh, nanoscience. Whereas how one could define the nanotechnology, which was, uh, this was taken from the Japanese uh, professor Noira uh, in 1974. He defined uh, nanotechnology as the design, characterization, protection, and application of structures, device, and systems by controlling shape and size of the nanometer scales. So you, one should understand what is the definition for the nanoscience and nanotechnology. And there is a clear uh, uh, distinct definitions for that. And with that as well, well there are many different uh, uh, aspects of nano classifications where in the literatures, people were talking about nanoparticles, nanocrystals, nanostructured or nanoscaled materials or nanophase materials, nanoclusters. So this can be uh, defined in, in as, as such uh, for a solid particle in the range of one to 100 nanometer is called as nanoparticle. A solid particle that is a single crystal in the nanometer scale regime is called as nanocrystals. Uh, across that, when you talk about nanoclusters, a collection of atoms or molecules up to 50 units, but this nanoclusters does not have in crystalline nature it may be in amorphous forms. And for the nano uh, structured or nano scaled materials, any solid material that has a nanometer dimensions, which has a three dimensional particles or two dimensional and one dimension, which is combinedly called as nano structured or nano scaled materials. So the, these are some of the uh, available uh, terms that are uh, attributed to the nano uh, particles. And here are some of the examples of nano materials nano crystals which can be made from metal semiconductors magnetic materials and ceramic materials 
Similarly, when you have talk about people who studied with nanowires, with metals, semiconductors, sulfides, oxides, nitrites, and nanotubes can be made from carbon layered metal, the chalconites, and nanoporous zeolites, uh, phosphates, and 2D arites, uh, surface thin films, a variety of materials has been studied with that. And 3D structures, super lattices, can be again made from metal semiconductors and magnetic materials. And why is so important that nanoscience is that nanoscale materials have strikingly different properties that quantum effects comes into play. In addition, that there is a fascinating physical, chemical, and electrical, optical, and magnetic properties that can be tuned by varying the size of the materials and also the shape. So with that effect, one can really see that the nanoscience is, is science is very important and uh, it has been widely placed its uh, role in many of the applications. And what are these unique properties? Uh, it's not really stopped with the, what I have stated here. It can you can imagine in all aspects of uh, the applications, the nanomaterials has its unique uh, properties. So not only miniaturizations, but changing the physical properties, loss of uh, physical uh, quantum physics supplies and uh, surface behavior dominates bulk material behavior compared to the bulk material behavior. Metals become harder, ceramics become softer, composites and alloys uh, of a whole variety is possible, uh, stronger, more heat resistance, and it can be transparent materials, increased chemical and uh, reduced weight, different interactions with light or other radiations, new electrical properties such as you can have a transition from metal to insulator or insulator to metallic transistor or semiconductor so novel biological properties has been also all this has been realized and with that uh, now people have been more trying to utilize these materials uh, into the uh, many of the device applications and what are the salient features of nanomaterials it has a finite size effects as i said you will have a hundred to thousand atoms to one nanoparticle or it's a source of quantum size effects when the two of the when when the, when when you pack the nano atoms by atoms you have an overlap of uh, wave functions which will really uh, make it uh, uh, quantum effects and it's which can possibly solve the transition from metallic to uh, non metallic to metallic behavior and it also has a surface to volume ratio then that is the surface interface effects so when you talk about nanomaterial it has a high surface to bulk ratio which can be used for in catalysis and here you see there is a size induced metal uh, here is a nice example which you have a, a bulk metal when you try to uh, slice slice it down to uh, nano scale you can make it as an insulator this has been also uh, experimentally and uh, theoretically proposed by many of the uh, scientists. Unlike pure metals, there is would be a discrete states at the uh, band edges. Electrons undergo quantum confinement in nanoparticles, showing the properties of uh, quantum dots. So here is the formula that one can use for surface to volume ratio and number of surface atoms that are present can be calculated here, estimated from this. So to find the dependency of the energy gap on the surface of the surface area of the particle size, so here is a nice graph which is taken from a literature. So you have a particle diameter versus the fraction of uh, for the sodium uh, atom surface. And here is an one electron energy gap. And you see that the, the diameter increases, the energy gap is going to decrease. So depending on the size of the particles, when you have a smaller size of uh, uh, the particle, then you will have a very large uh, uh, increase in the band gap. So with the decreasing particle uh, size, the energy band gap increases. With the decreasing the particle size, the surface fraction increases. Not only that, in also the thermodynamical effects. For example, if you have a, a sodium atom, for example, considering here sodium atoms, which has a thousand atoms, appear to be melted at uh, 288 Kelvin while the clusters of uh, 10,000 atoms melts in uh, 303 Kelvin. But so, sodium uh, melts, at bulk sodium melts at uh, 371 Kelvin. So you can also alter the thermal uh, or melting point uh, thermal properties can be quite, quite drastically changed because of the size effects. And 
And another important uh, fact that is illustrated here is uh, the nanoparticles will, from, for example, you, you all know that the gold will have a golden to yellow color and its uh, melting point is almost around 1064 degrees. And the bulk uh, gold is looking like this. When you consider like a one nanometer gold particles, it will have a melting point of 700 degrees C and it's uh, lambda max. That is the visualization of the color is almost in the 420 nanometer, that's the wavelength absorption uh, wavelength uh, absorption maximum is. Well, when you have a different sizes of this same gold nanoparticles, you can see that the, the, the melting point of the has almost similar for about 20 nanometer gold nanoparticles, but the color of is really different. For example, for 20 nanometers, you have a red, and for 100 nanometers, you will have a purple or pink color. So this is called as a quantum size of absorption. And then you can also, here is another illustration stating the particle size increases in the directions of arrows. Here it increases and you can see the band gap changes accordingly. And here is a uh, uh, fluor uh, cadmium selenide quantum dot that was uh, in a so, so, so solution form and it has been excited with the, some UV lines. And from that, one can determine the size of the nanoparticles. As you see from this is the, the lowest one would be two nanometers and it will be like a 10 nanometer range. And in between that you have different colors I'm stating for the, each of the size of the nanoparticles. And this can be also the same image uh, is illustrated in a graphical manner. And you see that the, the size of the nanoparticles is from 2.4 to 4.4 where the 2.4 will have a, an energy of uh, band gap of uh, almost uh, 2.4 electron volts and it decreases accordingly uh, for this increase in the uh, size of the nanoparticles. And this is with this introduction of the basic idea of nanomaterials, I will try to move on to the synthesis part. So how one could make these nanomaterials? There are several, you can make nanomaterials from all type of nanomaterials. You can make metal oxides, metals, semiconductors, even ceramics, composites, every, all materials can be made into nanomaterials because it's a, a type of material that is within lie in the range of uh, one to 100 nanometer scales. And this is, uh, you can classify them into mainly into two different approaches. Like uh, one is from uh, top to down. That is from, you make a bulk material and then you try to thin it down into very small material. Or the other one is bottom to, uh, bottom up approaches. And uh, this is very well known uh, approach that one could make the nano materials. And uh, this is a breaking down of bulk and milling and uh, it can be made from lithography and so forth. Whereas for the bottom-up approach, people have been studying both the chemical process and also the physical type methods. And you can make the, it's a building, atom is the building uh, material for the uh, making of nanomaterials uh, uh, of nanostructures through this setup. And again, further this uh, top-down and uh, bottom-up is uh, you can classify into uh, the, three different categories for the bottom up. One is the chemical synthesis, self assembly, and positional assembly. Whereas for the top down, you can have a lithography, cutting, etching, and the grinding mechanisms. So, with and the, the final applications is most of these chemical synthesis are uh, cosmetics, fuel additives, and other applications. Depending on what type of applications, one can choose for this uh, different uh, types of. In most of the electronic devices, so physical vapor depositions are widely considered due to several reasons. Uh, and here you can see the sol gel method is mostly used for synthesizing metal oxide nanoparticles. And chemical vapor deposition and sputtering is for large area thin films. And electro depositions for the disposed matrices. And lithography is a highly ordered nano assembly so as we studied. So, what is the advantages and disadvantages of these uh, two different approaches is uh, you can for top down approach large scale production and deposition over large area substrate is possible chemical purification is not needed whereas for the bottom up approaches ultra fine particles and nano shells tubes can be prepared but it has a limited, uh, narrow size distribution is possible to one this 
it is a cheaper technique but uh, when it's the, the uh, it, it it has uh, some disadvantages as uh, you all know that you have a, for the bottom up approach large scale production is very difficult and chemical purification is really required for this uh, with that introduction so first i will uh, go on to the uh, core precipitation which is what uh, comes into the chemical based method so you all synthesis is a specific sequence of a chemical uh, reaction that converts the starting material into a desired compound called target of the synthesis so in that you have for example in co-precipitation methods you took a anion solution and cation solutions when you try to add both of them into an uh, another uh, make an uh, mix them in, a, in a, another uh, beaker then you will uh, try to give them a time to nucleation and the growth to uh, form when then it will get agglomerated and that some precipitations will be formed and with that precipitation one could filter out the nano materials and then try to remove the water molecules and that is called as calcinations so this will yield a very nice uh, uh, nanoparticles with uh, quite large range of accumulations so you will not have a very uniformly sized uh, nanoparticles you will have a uh, uh, distribution which from small to uh, large particles because of the, the method that we have chosen it just doesn't have a, a systematic uh, time to uh, react or uh, to, uh, to induce the reactions between the anion and cation solutions so whereas to the sol gel technique the sol gel is a process of uh, again it's a wet chemical uh, synthesis where you have the transition of liquid colloidal solution that is called a sol to a solid three-dimensional network called the gel. So this to 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 uh, visualize this, you can see this uh, diagram. Whereas you can see you start with a precursor and then you dissolve this precursor in the uh, water uh, solutions and then you make this is a sol solutions and then it's a uh, condensation reactions will happen. And then you can either reduce it by several means, and then you can uh, try to allow them to grow and or aging. This is the growth of particles. If you leave the particles in the solutions and then you, for quite some time, then you can get a, a nice nanoparticles and you can use it for different applications. For example, here they have uh, dipped some textiles to make the coating of the textile in the solutions and either if you don't want to do that and you can try to dry it and make a powder from that and this could be and here is an illustration which is uh, stating that this for, for the preparation of uh, silica powder so if you do if you want to make a silica powder then you can use uh, the, these chemicals and then you can really make a bulk of silica powder from uh, these uh, chemicals and the next interesting uh, method is really quite uh, widely used these days or hydrothermal or solvothermal synthesis is one of the uh, most common used uh, method for preparing the nanomaterials with different uh, morphologies uh, depending on the solvent and also the time that you are giving uh, to make it in the reactions happen so but this is a very nice uh, container as you see here, this time, inside this container, a Teflon uh, beaker will be there. This is a Teflon chamber, and this is a stainless steel container, and this Teflon uh, will, chamber will be placed inside the steel chamber, and then this will be covered with the uh, stainless steel uh, covering. Uh, and then this can be placed in, the, uh, in a uh, kind of furnace for uh, hours. depending on the NLT, so the pressure versus the, the temperature. So depending on the temperature, the morphology and the uh, other uh, features of this nanomaterials will be really tuned in a different command. And uh, the next one would be the sonochemical methods. Here, the sonochemical method is nothing but an ultrasonic uh, processors. So here is a very nice uh, illustration of the instrumental uh, setup. So you have a power supply, piezoelectric transistors, where the piezoelectric transistor is used to produce the ultrasounds. 
and what happens when the ultrasonic irradiation is happening in the liquid solution there will be a formation of cavitation bulb uh, bubbles that are coming like this and with this bubble is the main uh, uh, nucleation center for the growth of the uh, nanomaterials so this will uh, certain range this will collapse uh, the bubble and the extremely conditions and then you can really make a, a determination of the size of the nanoparticles so this is really a, a micro reactor that enables the molecular fragmentation of the entrapped gases in the collapsed cavities so this is an another interesting uh, uh, method that people have been recently used for quite a lot of uh, applications and this is based fully on the sound waves so uh, this is acoustic uh, sound waves so. and the next one is the electrochemical methods where uh, the electrochemical method is a chemical reaction caused by the applied electrical current it involves uh, both the oxidation and reduction reactions where an atom or molecule is formed in the, the gain or loss of electrons by the charged species the process uh, involves oxidation that is removal of electrons and addition of electrons in the electrochemical cells this reaction is controlled by the electro or potential that you have applied for that. So here is another uh, this illustration which is uh, stating the synthesis of uh, AG nanoparticles, the silver nanoparticles. Here it is stating you can have an electrodes of uh, both the AG as anode and the cathode and you have a um, bias voltage applied between these two electrodes with a fixed uh, area of separations from these electrodes and you can really collect the uh, silver uh, crystals uh, growth in the bulk solutions as you, because of the anodic dissolution and the reductive add atoms in the nucleation forms and you can all sometimes it may be scrapped from these uh, cathode uh, regions and uh, here is an, another uh, example of uh, the electrochemical uh, synthesis of uh, iron uh, nanoparticles which is coated with a polymer on, on top of the iron oxide nanoparticles now what it happens is when you have uh, solutions that is uh, taken here and then you can mix the polymer that is the polydopamine uh, coated uh, magnetites and this will polymerize during the potential that it is applied and then this uh, oxidations will have iron oxide will be encapsulated with this uh, PDA that is the polydopamine uh, uh, by well, coated on top of it and by a one spot synthesis uh, method and this can be used uh, as a stabilizer uh, for getting agglomeration of these nanoparticles. The next one is uh, the template synthesis of uh, nanoparticles. Well, nanoparticles can be uh, synthesized using a, a method of uh, uh, already existing templates and this can be classified into so two different uh, templates one is a hot template and another one is a soft template i will be quickly posing that and for example in the hot template you have uh, aluminium uh, you take an aluminium and then you try to anodize and then you make like a very nice tubes onto this uh, uh, aluminium and then this can be used as a, a, a template to grow the nano structured materials like a tubes or uh, pore that can be controlled by uh, some kind of interposition so then you can really uh, have a, a very nice nano wires or uh, depending on the size of the uh, pore size of the uh, anodization that happens uh, during the uh, anodic oxidation of uh, aluminium so that was a hard template with this material will be uh, the template will be hard and it can be removed afterwards whereas to the soft template you can have a two different mechanism one is uh, you have a liquid that has a surfactant and then you have another species that uh, aerosol species that you want to cooperate with nucleations for so this for this you have a very nice example water in oil or oil in water so so you imagine that and then you can have that uh, mixture of solution to precipitate and then you can have a nice uh, pattern that can occur because of this uh, uh, surfactant that is acting uh, uh, for making uh, templates. And in another one is you have a liquid crystal formation incorporating inorganic precursors and then you transfer these inorganic precursors to uh, end materials 
and then we can finally have a template that can be used to for uh, deposit uh, or any other uh, uh, final uh, product that you want to make so there are the two different uh, uh, methods for the templates and then this is an another uh, uh, formation of mycelles micelles and then this you can see the water and the air and you can have a uh, uh, micelle formations with a rich of uh, concentration of uh, uh, micelles that can be have uh, uh, some kind of uh, arrangements like that and then you can really grow uh, the nano particles in that regions and there are uh, uh, surfactant arrangements uh, with the micelles has uh, many different uh, uh, orientations that could uh, make one is a spherical rod like and bilayer type laminar type and then inverse uh, <laughs> Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the. This is the summary of the different types of uh, template methods. So you can see this uh, summary that states whatever I have said on the. Uh, three different uh, templating uh, methods and uh, you can see the summary of uh, nanomaterial preparations and uh, it can be really classified uh, physical methods chemical methods and biological methods and uh, this is what i want to say with the uh, nanomaterial synthesis whereas to the characterization <laughs> that people really seem to know whether the nanomaterials that one has prepared is uh, uh, crystalline or not so for that everyone would like to do an x-ray diffraction method and the x-ray diffraction is a very nice tool that would, would give us a, a induction of uh, what type of uh, uh, hk appliance that these materials would uh, form so here is uh, some examples of our copper tough um, mop that has given you how and then here is a and this will uh, with that we will know that the structure of the material whereas to the uv absorption spectrometer as is a very nice direct evidence of the size of the nano nanoparticles can be estimated with the absorption spectrum so when you have a colloidal nanoparticles using the mere theory, you can really find out or estimate the nanoparticle size by using the UV visible spectrometers. So uh, for example, if you have a powders, then the UV visible spectrometer with the liquid cannot be used. So one has to go for a diffused reflectance spectroscopy. So the diffused spectroscopy can be obtained at a 45 degree or degree angles that you can capture the reflectance uh, from the sample that is powder or a thin film that is coated onto a substrate can be really estimating the uh, uh, band gap as well and uh, uh, this is what the some of the uv is a reflectance for the zinc oxide and the uh, graphene uh, 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 carbon uh, nano quantum dots go with the zinc oxides and uh, uh, the other one is the photoluminescence that could estimate the not only the size but also the different uh, levels in your uh, quantum dots. For example, if you have a valence band and conduction band, you can have several transitions that could occur, and you can see that the, each of the transitions will have uh, the shape of your uh, um, emission, emitted uh, photons will be have a wider range. If it has a only transition from valence band to conduction band, you will have a sharp edge bands. Whereas here in these cases, you have many different levels that are contributing to your photoluminescence. And the next one is the surface morphology, which would be easily identified for, from the electron microscopic uh, technique. The electron microscopic technique is a very simple technique that has to really proved to be uh, given an, an a, a, a illustration of the 
surface morphology and shape and size of the particles that can be studied. And here you see the, the some very nice uh, particles with the different shapes like a cube, spherical, and other bulk materials are also present. So with this illustration, one can identify what are the shape and size of these nanoparticles. Uh, here is an, another uh, uh, SEM image stating the um, top view and side view of uh, TAO2 nanotubes that are uh, made from the uh, one of the templates that as, uh, I have mentioned. And uh, the TEM, transmission electron microscope, is also used to determine the the quality of your nanoparticles, both the structural aspects as well as the size determination is also uh, uh, estimated with these uh, techniques. Here you see you have a very nice fringes that it states it's a very nice crystals and you can see this hexagonal kind of shapes and some of them are uh, spherical uh, shapes and some of them are elongated uh, shapes. That's the electron microscope techniques and whereas for the scanning probe microscope, so you can also think about that you don't need to worry about the damage of your samples because in some kinds of electron microscopes really uh, damages uh, some of your samples during the preparations or uh, during the scanning of your samples. Whereas to the scanning probe microscope, you, you don't need to worry about the damage of your uh, samples because these uh, techniques are really very useful techniques. Uh, like a gramophone, you have a tip that will be is scanning over your surfaces without even touching the samples. So the, it, the, in the scanning microscope family, there are several techniques. Well, that is, the first technique was uh, uh, discovered, uh, that is called the scanning channeling microscope and atomic force microscopes. And other uh, techniques are also available as stated here to study the different aspects of the um, nanomaterials. And this is the illustration of how the atomic force microscopy is going to work. You have a cantilever beam that the laser beam is focused on to the, uh, just above the tip of your sample, uh, tip of your, the, the cantilever, and then sample is scanned uh, over the surface. Uh, here you see the tip is uh, scanning over the sample, and then uh, you can find out the topographical images uh, of these samples. And this is some of the uh, physics behind the A from uh, using the atomic force microscopes. And you can have different type of uh, contact mode, uh, uh, non-contact mode and as an intermediate mode. And this can be used to study the surface of your uh, morphological impact of your sample. And this is the uh, summary of the techniques that uh, I would uh, Summarize that for the structural uh, studies, you can have what you really uh, keen to observe. Uh, depending on that, you can choose a particular study. And if you are really interested in optical, I would really go for UV based photoluminescence and Roman spectroscopy, which can uh, tell us uh, uh, the information about the optical properties. Whereas for the structural information, I would really go for the X ray diffractions and for the scanning electron microscope. X-ray diffraction will give you the, the crystallinity nature and the scanning electron microscope will give you the shape and size of your pictures. And for the electrical uh, properties, one can really think about whether you want need to uh, go for the, uh, the uh, nature of whether this material is a, a semiconductor or insulator uh, so what, what type of uh, nature this material has, depending on that one could uh, go for uh, particular studies. And for the magnetic properties, you can go for uh, ESM or MFM or SQUID studies. So these are the, some of the techniques that I will state here. And with that, I think uh, the, our time is up. Um, but if you have any questions or any uh, clarifications with that, Uh, are you continuing or do you have any few slides left? Or uh, I can quickly state uh, the applications. These nanoparticles are really used for making the solar cell devices. Where the solar cell devices are, I will can explain you uh, quickly uh, the disensitized solar cell fabrications. If you are really interested, 
uh, to know how the disensitized solar cells. For example, the, these are the components that one need to uh, have it for making a disensitized solar cells. So the disensitized solar cells is mainly composed of uh, the mechanical support. As I said, you need to prepare uh, nanoparticles with the titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, which is the, the main uh, photo anode material. So for example, then you need to coat that material onto the transparent conducting oxide, like indium tin oxide or FTO. Then you need to choke them into the sensitizers like uh, metal-based uh, dyes or uh, natural dyes. Then uh, this is um, uh, assembled in a such a way that you can uh, inject some electrolyte as for the redox mediator, mostly it's an iodine is used in our studies and the other part of the electrode will be, counter electrode will be either the platinum or carbon. So after this uh, assembly, for example, here this is stepwise uh, uh, methods have been shown in the figure. So you have the ITO, then you cut the ITO into desired uh, sizes and then you coat that this is uh, some TaO2 nanoparticles that are made as a paste and then you use a doctor blade method and then you can coat them in nicely into a, a desired uh, dimensions like here we have quarter like a, a five cross five uh, uh, centimeters and then we can see that this quarter uh, the uh, TaO2 is dipped into the dye and then you can really see that how well this dye is absorbed onto the TaO2 molecule, uh, TaO2 uh, semiconductor. And the counter electrode you can prepare either by platinum or you can use it as a carbon. And this carbon is uh, made for by two different ways. One is just from graphite and the other one is from the smoke that is obtained in from the candle. And here is the assembly of this device. You just as uh, assemble the device as a, in a such a manner that uh, you could inject some of the electrolyte and then the device is ready and you see that you have an open circuit voltage of 2.6 uh, and the, there is a small motor which is running from this uh, device. So this has been demonstrated by many, many researchers. Mm, still people are, there are several drawbacks on this. Uh, the main drawbacks is the stability of the device and the nanomaterials that prepared is not really all of the nanoparticles are very uniform and the porosity nature is need to be controlled and tuned the, the uh, with that the if you one could uh, justify that the all this can be tailored in a proper manner then maybe we could uh, uh, have an enriched uh, efficiency with the long term uh, uh, device and uh, mostly people are using the ruthenium metal based dyes which is very expensive and to, uh, to overcome that people are looking for solid state uh, uh, dyes or solid state uh, um, quantum bus like CDS and so forth can be used as uh, sensitizers. So that is what I want to say and then with that I think I can uh, say thank you and I thank uh, uh, Ms. Adhira Jain for research scholar and she is from MEC, your college, and she is working with us now as a research scholar at MPU, and she helped me to prepare the slides. And um, my thanks to Dr. Jairam for the kind invitations. Thank you so much, and if you need any questions or clarifications, I will be happy to take. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. Uh, See, uh, the session is open for discussion. If you have a few questions, uh, please, please ask. Unmute your mic and ask the question. Hello. Uh, yes, is sir. it audible? Yes, yes, yes. Hi, Jaydana, this is Riyas. Yes. <laughs> uh, research student of uh, Jairam. Yeah, met, I, uh, I remember you. Other... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope you're doing good and your team. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, just I want to clarify one thing that uh, our work is basically on uh, micro level uh, particles. Our synthesis uh, technique results uh, with uh, micro level sized samples. Okay. Okay. So regarding phosphorescence.
how uh, far it will be different from the properties of regarding that yes actually micro materials micro materials uh, when, when you when you try to, uh, as i explained when you have a nano materials material itself nano material itself has some kind of fluorescence property because of uh, quantum effects am i right and when you have a micro scale regime when you have micro scale regime it, it is really different from the nano scale regime so the incorporations of uh, uh, photo, for example i am talking about okay. in the fluorescence uh, in the uh, photoluminescence spectra if you have a nano materials then this will have a really quantum effect and this itself has a uh, band transition from valence band to conduction band when you have a quantum effect but if your okay. micro regime doesn't have any quantum effect you may not have okay. any transition that will happen it will act like a bulk material itself okay 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 so phosphorescence also will be will be in that manner okay yes yes okay 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 jayendra thank you thank you uh, hello myself yeah. sabna yes sabna uh, at ms banani college so i'm having a general question of the sort like uh, while we are working on micro materials uh, as mm. reas mentioned and the thing is uh, while making the pellets uh, for some sort of characterization or mm. uh, specifically for uh, doing the, its conductivity studies and all uh, mm. pellet so brittle so we plan to mix it up with some pvg and peg and all so my mm. question is will it affect the conducting properties of the material So definitely, if you don't uh, really uh, anneal them afterwards or sinter them afterwards, I, I hope you sinter it afterwards, because uh, there is uh, you don't sinter uh, it. Completely remove those materials in a right way. It's weird out. Because, because you are you, whatever you said, it's more or less a polymer, and this polymer cannot withstand more than 150 degrees C. So if you are sintering at very high temperature, I think all these polymers would go away. and you will have a very nice uh, uh, pellet that could be used to for electrical properties like we'll have to be specific about the heating rate and all uh, not really uh, because i i don't know which type of material you are talking about for example in zinc oxide uh, that we have been uh, using it for quite some times and we have used a, a similar type of polymers and we can sinter it uh, almost around 1000 degrees and we uh, we for 1000 degree for 2 uh, hours is more than enough and we have a very nice ceramic kind of pellets that can be we have used to for uh, both thermal electric applications and uh, other uh, studies oh, sir. so it's like uh, up to how much concentration and all we, we can add this pg no, definitely the concentration is very important while you are mixing it up you should not add too much of uh, uh, the polymers uh, so we should be so specific about its molecular weight and all yeah for the polymers yes there is a derived uh, i think you need to optimize them to each of your materials because for some cases you need high concentration and for some cases you do not need high concentration and uh, we have optimized our uh, polymer that we need to incorporate for the uh, pellet on zinc oxide is optimized for our condition so you need to optimize the mixing for uh, the material that you are going to prepare okay fine so i didn't see it in much papers that's why i got out no so the, I, that is very true people are not really mentioning that even we don't mention it in our articles uh, this is really a good question sir because uh, the, it is a really a, you one could write an article on that itself because you need to optimize as a such a way that when the pellet is not cracking and when how when you add more more amount of uh, polymers how the electrical characterization changes when you have a little how the uh, characterization changes uh, if for example in some cases if you are mixing it with too too much of concentration your pellet itself will crack okay. after the so so that, that those kind of so you need to have a balance between uh, those kind of uh, things 
ओके सर थैंक यू हेलो हेलो ऑडिबल यस 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 what is the basic difference between chemical vapor deposition and physical vapor deposition your voice is very feeble can you louder hello wahi bol wahi bhai you are not audible hello yes now it is uh, uh, what is the basic difference between chemical vapor deposition and physical vapor deposition so uh, it's very uh, straightforward you have a solid material and then you from the solid material for example if you want to deposit uh, zinc oxide uh, with the physical vapor method uh, you can really take a zinc oxide target which is a solid material and then you send ions like organ ions and hit the target and then you remove the uh, zinc oxide and you can coat it on a substrate this is a sputtering technique that is comes under the physical vapor process there is no chemical reactions happening in here it's just a mere transfer of atom or ions from one target from to the substrate so this is a physical process whereas to the chemical process the same zinc oxide can be made by chemical reactions like you take a source material like the zinc acetate anhydrase and then you try to react with some kind of sodium hydroxide you make a reduction process and then this reduction process will yield a zinc oxide material so this would be the uh, with an example that i have stated for the same case of zinc oxide and the uh, for the physical and the chemical process okay we have a in call message can i know about the can you read it can i know about the research opportunities and opportunities in mumbai kamra university uh, we, we have a really good uh, uh, intake for example uh, recently our uh, government has uh, sanctioned quite a lot of fund for uh, the russo project and uh, this russo project is uh, taking up n number of uh, phd students especially in physics and chemistry so far uh, they have taken like uh, Uh, each of the, the schools uh, has more than 20 or 25 students and uh, with the good fellowships and uh, you can approach the faculties uh, those who are really interested to apply for projects and getting some funds and that is what the opportunities are and you can come for internships and uh, you can come for visits and uh, we, we can have a collaborative research activities that's what the uh, university is quietly open for that uh, do we have more questions and uh, hello sir uh, good morning good morning yes. my name is sona i have a general question Yes. Uh, how the uh, solvent properties could influence the nanoparticle lattice orientation yes it how is we, no, i mean that's a good question actually uh, solvent is very very important uh, for making uh, uh, this nano materials for example what we did was we were making a uh, indium tin, uh, tin oxide uh, sample and we were using solvent of water ethanol methanol and we could found that the nature of the solvent really influences the formation of tin oxides and how that is really depending on the uh, density of your sample and also uh, the precursor that you are trying to take also plays a vital role on the uh, synthesis of and this will Uh, really give an impact on the uh, nano material features okay sir thank you sir myself shaista sir could yeah. you explain the chemical deposition process spray by coating is it uh, easy is it easy than other vapor ah. techniques no 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 i mean is it easy or so spray is a very nice technique uh, spray paralysis is really a very nice and uh, very simple technique 
depending on what type of applications one is going to uh, go for. So spray is uh, quite simple. You don't need to have a sophisticated instrument for that. You can use like a scar hair sprayer. I think you know the hair sprayer water that you used to spray pyrolysis uh, technical. I mean, if you have a technique, you have an instrument, then it is fine. But if you don't have an instrument, you can even use a, any nice uh, spraying uh, method and then you can coat it on any of the substrate. And this is a very nice technique, and people have been widely thinking about it, using it for uh, large scale applications. It has some uh, drawbacks when it comes to the uh, uniformity. But other than that, uh, I think uh, this is a very nice technique for coating many of the uh, applications. Thank you, sir. Thank you. More questions? Any more questions? Uh, so if there are no more questions, I think we can wind up the session. Yes. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Once again, I am hand, ha, handing over the mic to Sabna for the word of thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jaram, for the invitation. Hello. I think I'm audible. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, respected Principal uh, Dr. V. U. Amira, Chief Guest of the Day Dr. M. Jenti Nadan, IIC President of the College Dr. P. Jaira, IIC Vice President Srimadi Salima, my dear fellow faculties, faculties from other colleges, and my dear most students. So, so far we had been through the first uh, impact lecture series on R&D category on the topic synthesis characterization of narrow materials for energy con conversion and storage devices for the last one hour, conducted under the auspices of Institutions Innovation Council, that is IIC. As you all know that IIC plays a key role in whole of the higher education institutions, including our college nowadays in inspiring and nurturing young minds to materialize their innovative ideas. And in today's session, starting from the basics, Jayanti Natsa explained the journey as well as the properties and applications of nanomaterials in a very crisp and lucid way, catering to the need of multifaceted audience. In the latest slides, he described about different methods of nanomaterial synthesis and characterization, followed by solar cell technology with disensitized solar cell in specific. And I, did, I think he didn't move to uh, describe much about this energy storage devices. So we expect to hear from it in detail in a, a later session. So on behalf of IIC and MES Banani College, I extend a heartfelt gratitude to you, sir, for enlightening us with a wonderful session amidst your busy work schedule. On an added note, we, the faculties and PG students of our college, were fortunate enough to visit Jayantinath's sir's lab at MKU, where we met his vibrant research group actively involved in research. At this point, I acknowledge the kind hospitality from you and your team in accommodating and motivating our students. And we expect the same generosity in the future too, sir. I express my words of thanks to Dr. Vu Amira, principal, for her constant support and motivation in enriching the R&D and IAC activities of the college. At this opportune time, I take my privilege to appreciate and thank Dr. P. Jaira, IAC president, for having given us the apt resource person in handling the topic. I thank Srimadi Salima, IIC Vice President, handling the technical side. Thanking all the fellow colleagues and students, I think we can wind up the session. Thank you all. Thank you, Sabina, for the So, And yes, you are most welcome anytime to Madhuri Kamara University. OK, sir. We'll plan. So you are also welcome here. Sorry? Uh, uh, we are, we are, we hope your physical presence here uh, in future. In yeah. In immediate future. Yes, sure. Uh, we mm -hmm. welcome you, sir. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. With this, I think we can wind up. <clears throat> thank you all.